It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Bill Harmson, the women's basketball coach at Dort, and the defenders are now national champions. A 57-53 victory over Providence in the title game. Coach, first national championship for the program. Talk about what that means to you. You've had a day or two to think about it now. Well, first of all, Joey, it's great to be with you. Great to meet you. Um, and to uh, be on Midwest Sportsnet is a real privilege for us. Um, so it's uh, really awesome to, uh, to be with you today. Um, you know, it's just so surreal. Um, it's been uh, one week uh, since this happened, and, and uh, I, I'm still in the processing mode of this. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, avenues with which my mind goes all the time. And uh, the reality is uh, the first three mornings after uh, the national tournament, and it's probably because of the uh, emotional and mental fatigue. But I was like, man, how are we going to guard Maldonado, right? How are we going to how are we going to uh, put this thing together one more time? And and uh, then I kind of get sad because I remember it was already over and we had won. And so that's a that's a that's a cool thing that uh, I had to work through. But uh, man, is just a tremendous, tremendous uh, opportunity to showcase Dort University on that stage and uh, just the amount of support um, that this team received from the community, from the greater upper Midwest region, and then also from our students was uh, certainly a memory. Um, but uh, yeah, we're still in the processing phase of this and uh, we just feel really blessed that uh, we had the opportunity to compete in another national championship. And you, and you keep the national championship right there in the state of Iowa for, for another year. The, the championship game, and I appreciate your thoughts on that too, because you just prepare and prepare over and again. It was a game uh, the, where there were runs. Uh, not much scoring in the first half. Defense really, uh, I would imagine, kicking in on both sides and, and trying to, to take care of, of leading scorers. But both teams had runs in the second half, and you all closed out on a 10-4 run to really mm -hmm. seal the deal. Take us through the game. Yeah, it was a, it was a weird game. Uh, we like to play with some speed and tempo, and that's when we're at. We get the game to our pleasure that way. Um, well, Providence did an excellent job of just locking down some of our offensive looks and did a really nice job of taking away transition. And, and when you can't get a clean defense rebound like we take pride in, uh, it was really hard to get out and get into that transition set and, and be able to use some of our athletes that way. In the first half, we kind of bogged ourselves down, I would call it, um, trying to match up with our big post player. And she was a great player, a freshman for him. And, and uh, we're not necessarily built that way. And, and, uh, and she scored nine points, the big post player did in the first half. And so, you know, we only scored 20, which is very unusual for this team. But we felt really good about only giving up 27 and uh, knowing that we could get those seven points back pretty quickly. Um, so in the second half, um, Joe, you said it, it was it was runs, right? We come out and score that first bat or excuse me, Carly gets uh, fouled in the first possession of the second half. And and then I think the lead actually ballooned up to 10 for Providence. Um, there was a time in that third quarter where we cut it down to one. And uh, and then they got it back up. They, they went on a 6-0 run to get it back to seven. And and at that quarter at the quarter break, our goal is to either, you know, cut the lead in half or less. And so we went into the, uh, you know, the fourth quarter break uh, down to feeling pretty good about ourselves. Um, and then we actually had a two point deficit still at about the five minute mark. And and then at the media timeout at 420 or whatever it was, we finally had the score tied. And uh, after that timeout, Providence scores a nice high low look. And then that was their last field goal of the game. And uh, our team just really dove in defensively. We had huge plays down the stretch from everybody. It just wasn't one person. Uh, it was everybody. And, uh, and when you have a, uh, you know, we, we had a very experienced team this year. And, uh, you know, you kind of grow to expect that over time. Uh, two years ago in the national title game, we, I thought we waited too long to really get engaged. And uh, this year, I, I truly believe we were engaged the whole time. We just had a hard time putting the ball in the hole in the first half. And um, so to come out with that victory, you know, um, Bailey Beckman, fifth year senior, hitting free throws down the stretch. Carly Gustafson, fifth year senior, uh, being able to uh, hit one of two down the stretch uh, after she missed two earlier 
um, and uh, um, was just a true testament of their competitiveness and 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 truly what it meant what it meant for our team uh, to get that first national championship. I, I feel like I'm just watching through again one more time and listening to you tell a story. It, it's uh, and I know it'll be with you for years and years to come. Mm-hmm. So you'll be able to play, play it all back in your head. Talk about some of the individual players. Macy Seaver is a sophomore. Uh, she had a fantastic game. Obviously, a product of a fantastic season. Uh, recently been named All-American. She was the tournament MVP, and her performance in the final game, 10 points, 8 boards, 8 assists. That's a pretty good stat line, Coach. She was. She just had a tremendous sophomore season, and she was really good for us as a freshman, too. Uh, Macy is a pass first kid. Um, she's the prototypical play with speed, get your teammates involved point guard. And uh, as uh, the season progressed, uh, we had a couple of key injuries uh, with knees um, over the last uh, four and a half, five weeks of the season. Both of those women that went out played over 20 minutes a game and one was our leading scorer. And, um, and so Macy um, I challenged her to pick up her scoring because, you know, if you get 20, you're still going to get those, you know, those eight or nine assists will come easier if you're scoring with it too. And so she took that as a challenge and, and uh, man, one, I think it was our uh, uh, semifinal game. She scored 14 in a row uh, to end the game. And she just, uh, cont- excuse me, that was in our uh, round of 16 game. So she just continued throughout the course of the season to elevate her play and then to be on that national stage with pressure and duress and scouting report and, and playing against great guards uh, for her to see what she did um, was just, I mean, I, as, as her coach, I just try and see the game through her eyes. She's that good. And uh, um, she, she rose to the occasion big time. And so for her to be the MVP of the tournament, you know, she's the first person to deflect and say, well, my teammates, my teammates. Um, but she was, she was awesome. And uh, um, she just had a, tr- just a tremendous tournament. We're on Midwest sports net now here on the summit, getting to visit with Bill Harmson. And I appreciate you all watching today. Please subscribe. Please continue to enjoy the videos here. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. I mentioned coach Harmson, the newly minted NAIA national coach of the year. Congratulations for that coach. And I know it it uh, it does uh, help to have players as well. Yet you had scores. You you talked about the fact twenty points was was rare for your team for that to happen. I mean, this is a team that's putting up eighty plus points a mm-hmm. game, and a number of girls that are putting the ball in the basket. I mentioned Macy Severs. Of course, you've talked about Carly Gustafson, first and third team All Americans respectively for what they've done. So many other players that just uh, did well for you this season. Oh man, I yeah, Carly and Macy were outstanding, but then. You know, Bailey Beckman, uh, she was an All-American for us last year. And um, obviously, uh, I think she was a four-time All-Conference performer in our league. And um, and she just continued to step up all season long and stayed healthy. And she just had an outstanding senior year. Just to, She just led very well. Uh, we had two other seniors, Macy Nielsen. Uh, she was our sniper, uh, great three-point shooter. Uh, finished in the top 10 of three-pointers made here at Dort. And uh, she just... Uh, complete culture kid, um, complete uh, teammate kid, and uh, uh, certainly left her impact uh, not only on the basketball floor, but more importantly in the locker room. She was just outstanding. And, and Faith Van Holland, um, our other senior, um, uh, my recruiter as a junior varsity player, and uh, um, she just continued to improve and improve and improve. And uh, with her in the starting lineup, I think we won you know close to 80 five, 86% of our games. She's just that glue kid that is willing to do the dirty work. She always drew our uh, opponent's toughest offensive uh, matchup. And uh, Faith really just accepted that role with grace and enthusiasm every day because she knew that that was her role. And uh, and during the national tournament, it was really fun. She hit some big threes for us too and scored at the basket a couple times. And, you know, that's always fun to do. But a lot of the things that she does, does not get in the scorebook. And uh, so if Macy, Macy hits a big three to spark our run in the third quarter, right? Uh, left side corner, our only three of the night. Macy hit it. Faith Van Hollen, Carly misses two free throws. We're down one. Faith gets the offensive board, dishes it to Janie. Score. Now we're playing defense up one instead of down one. 
And just those little plays that those seniors made, uh, Faith got two steals down stretch. Um, just little plays that turn out to be huge over the course of the game. Yeah. JD Schoenhoven, I think, um, is uh, very uh, – she, she's not recognized enough. For, for for what she does. I mean, the number of double-doubles she had this year in the national tournament, I think she was close to averaging a double-double. Mm -hmm. And at, she's one of those players that at the end of the game, you go, man, she had 15 and 12. How'd that happen? And she's just the hardest working, toughest kid that I have been around. And uh, and again, just does the dirty work, draws a tough guard, and, and it is relentless on the glass. And uh, and then scores at the basket. And uh, the last seven weeks of the season uh, was some of the basketball, best basketball that I'd seen her play. Um, Eliana Caparis, another junior, um, with Gracie Schoenhoven, our freshman uh, who was leading us in scoring, went out. Ellie's role really increased. And, um, and here's a kid, too, that was a junior varsity player for us and kind of got thrown into the fire last year. And this year just really took her role on and hit some big shots for us in the first half, had a run out in the first half in that championship game, rebounded like crazy and had a huge three point. Uh, she recovered on the three point line and got a big block on the three point line, you know, in the fourth quarter. So she just played so, so well um, for us. Um, am I forgetting anybody, Joey? Um, <laughs> then we had three, three women off the bench uh, that had to kind of fill, fill a role with Hayden and, Gracie both being out with Liv Harrison, freshman, Will Bleeker, freshman, and uh, Taylor Durant, a sophomore. And uh, those all, all those kids played some JV and worked their way through, and we felt really comfortable with matchups at times. And, and man, they just, you know, you talk about that shining moment in March. They had a bunch of them just in their own right. And so uh, really a fun team to be with. Um, you know, when you lose two big pieces down the stretch and then to see – these other kids, these other women step up and contribute, not just taking up space, but contribute uh, is just really a, a really a testament to their character and also to the testament to the leadership that we have in our senior class. I thoroughly enjoy listening to that. And, and where I want to head from here, I can just, I can hear it in the way that, that you speak and, and share about this team. I, you're no stranger to titles. I mean, you, you win championship, of course, coming off a championship now. You said just a week ago. State championships also. Boys, girls, teams, you've, you've led teams there and gotten it taken care of. I want to read something, though, you know, along the lines of your coaching philosophy. And I'm taking this from the bio page on the website. So this is a, a partial quote there. It is my goal. Every woman that is a part of Dort University women's program will be equipped with the spiritual, social, and emotional skills to prosper in the workplace as well as establish homes built on Jesus Christ. I love that line. I love that sentence. And I'd love for you to, to share and uh, maybe expound on that a little bit. Although I think it says it all right there. Mm. Well, thank you for that. It, uh, it, you know, in a university at Dort, like Dort university, it, it is paramount that our relationship with Christ, it grows, but it's challenged. And, uh, uh, when you have women in that, you know, that 18 to 22 year range where, you know, mental health and, and image and wellness and all these things um, uh, can, can turn into huge issues. And, uh, but we, we want to, at the end of the day, our identity is not in that orange basketball, right? At the end of the day, our identity is in Christ. And, and our team has really accepted that. And we recruit for that. Um, we recruit kids that have a spiritual longing uh, to, to challenge. We, we recruit kids that have that spiritual longing that want to be a part of something that is bigger than themselves, where they, where they feel great about sacrificing for the betterment of the good of the group, as opposed to counting minutes or counting shots, right? And, and in, our, in our culture today, I mean, that's the norm. Uh, counting minutes and counting shots. I can get minutes here. I can't get minutes there. I'm getting shots here. I can't get shots there. And, and, and that has permeated and infiltrated the sports uh, life uh, across our country. And so to find people that, that, that fit that mentality is, is challenging. But I also believe that women and parents are longing for that today too. 
and and there is a there is a yearning for something more, where um, where we could come into a place and be challenged spiritually and 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 mentored. There's a there's a yearning for a place where we can go and we can serve others before ourselves, and there there's where we can get our degree to become fully employable. I mean, that's what all parents want, right? So they're their parents, so they can be fully employable and fully engaged in society to make a kingdom impact. And then we still get to play some hoops. And, and I truly believe that uh, God blesses that. As, and, and those are our priorities. And so I've been humbled by the growth of this program. I've been humbled by uh, just watching our women come in as 18-year-olds uh, and, 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 and some immaturity, right? Because I was too at that age. And then to see that, that growth um, continue to uh, you know, the, the spirit working in each of these women to continue that growth, to continue that uh, that yearning for more um, um, is just really humbling to see. Well, I, I appreciate that. And obviously there are results of it uh, that, that we're seeing right now. And, and I know in the future, you're going to have the opportunity to see even more of the fruit of, of what's coming with uh, from your time with them. Well, I I, you know, and talk about the national championship and, and the program seems to be in a good, in a good place right now at national champions two years ago, just, I mean, that close. And I, and I know you probably think about that, <laughs> that, yeah. that yeah. run as well every now and again, but uh, so close recruiting has to be, I, I won't say easy, but, but it has to be easy with that kind of resume. So uh, take us through the next uh, steps for the defenders. Where do you go from here? Yeah, well, we have a we have a great incoming freshman class uh, coming into Dort again next year. Uh, really encouraged by them. Just um, you know, they're great basketball players, but they're even better people, and uh, just highly supportive families, highly supportive uh, um, um, communities that they're coming from, and uh, um, and great high school coaches that that not only want to see them succeed on the floor, but also in their life and. So Dort is a good fit for this class coming in. And as we continue on with recruiting, um, you know, it's because you play in two title games in three years, it certainly doesn't change the type of person we're looking for, right? The type of person that we're trying to attract here. And, and we, can, we can work on basketball skills. We can drill those things and we can dive deep into the fundamentals of the game. Um, but, but, that character of these individuals is, is way more important to me. I want great kids before great players because uh, great kids can turn into great players mm -hmm. um, because there is that selfish mentality. You know, we had, I think we had five players average 10 or more points and we had a couple more at eight and nine and man, that doesn't happen if you're, if you're looking for shots, right? That doesn't happen if you're not passing the basketball and, and uh, this team certainly has that mentality and uh and I know it's fragile and I understand those things are fickle. And, um, but uh, with the group that we have returning next year and we'll get Hayden and Gracie back from injury and, and we have a, a solid, solid group returning. And then we got a great group coming in um, and it's really fun, you know, getting our message out and spreading the good news of Dort University to, you know, freshmen and sophomores. And uh, that's a lot of fun too. And getting to meet those, those players and parents and, and uh, um, yeah, we're just going to continue getting back to work and, and keeping our eyes focused on those things that are priority for us. And uh, and then we still get to play some hoops and hopefully pursue uh, championships. And that's our goal. Well, I appreciate the, the fact that that you understand the important things and, and where they fall. And, and again, just uh, building these these people i i still i could i i've read this by the way that's that sentence i read earlier and just talking about prospering establishing homes built on jesus i've read that so many times in just getting ready to visit with you today i'm going to read it more when uh when we're done that just stands out to me and i appreciate what you stand for and and i i encourage you coach enjoy the spring you all deserve it and you've earned it so enjoy the spring and and have a great time and we look forward to hopefully getting to visit with you again next season as you go along coach bill harmson the nai national coach of the year and his team national champions in 2023 2024 coach thank you so much for taking time with us on the summit here today hey joe i really appreciate your time and i look forward to the next time we visit together